You're gonna regret that. Oh, there you do. I'm unmuted. Uh, I can't be stopped. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to another live painting extravaganza. My name is David Lozo. I'm a Southern California based Day of the Dead style artist. Um, welcome. It's been a couple weeks. We uh, had our big sale, which is still going on. So it's been a busy time just packing up orders and getting them all shipped out. But we decided to get to some painting, get caught up a little bit. So welcome again. And feel free to fire any questions. I'm going to be, uh, I've already done the background acrylic layer and all the gouache layer, which is all the color. And now I'm going to be laying all the line work in. So I'm going to be painting for probably an hour, or an hour and a half. Um, feel free to fire any questions through. Again, thanks for joining me and uh, let's get after it. Fingers here. Alexander saying hi. Hey, Alexander. And that Germany is watching for a few minutes before bedtime. All right, one got in, in got in. <laughs> one in the morning. Why can't we time this? Sneak button? a little Germany in. <laughs> Scott Solis says, "Long time no watch. How have you been?" Hey, Scott. Thanks for joining us. We are good. Like I said, we just uh, had the, the big Christmas July sale, so it's been busy, but we're all caught up now and just figured we'd get to some painting. It's been a busy few weeks. We had the uh, licensing show in Las Vegas. So I got the live demo out there, which is really fun. And now we're just getting caught up with some pieces. Kate Steele says, I uh, still love my original. Kate, tell me which uh, which original you have. Which original do you have, Kate? Um, Salvage Ginger over on Instagram says, do you have any visits planned to the gallery in Prescott? Salvage, Salvage Ginger. We have, um, so I'll be out in the gallery um, in December, the week uh, weekend of the, I want to say like the 14, 15, 16, something like that. That weekend. About two, three weeks before Christmas. Yeah, two, three weeks before Christmas. And I'll be doing a live demo and signing anything you got, anything you ever bought, you can bring by. Um, so we'll be there then. That's that's the uh, the next time I'll be out in Arizona. If you're in San Diego, I'll be doing a live demo at the um, Day of the Dead Notion side. Also, I have, a, I have a, a really great event to announce. I think I'll tell you guys first. I'm working with Ale Smith. Um, a local San Diego brewery on there. They have a big event and we're doing a custom uh, design, we're doing art for a beer label, a custom label and a custom beer, limited release. So really excited about that project, which is getting rolling soon. And I'll try and live paint it here so you guys get to see it first. But I'll be live painting demo in October in San Diego there, probably also um, maybe in downtown San Diego and Old Town um, as Day of the Dead gets closer. But we'll get all those things figured out as we get as the season rolls on here, but that's what I know about right now. Melissa Comstock says I'm here. There you go, Melissa. Finally. Trying to, she's trying to get that perfect attendance back because she <laughs> bottled it up. Once you've blown that, you can't, yeah, you can't yeah. get it back. Then you're just like everybody else. Scare Ventures says Fright Nights at Alesmith. Fright Nights at Alesmith, he's, yeah. he's, he's already. Yeah, that's... Um... I'm curious. Has have you been there? Did you go to Scare Ventures? Did you have you done that? No, he is. He is that. Oh, he is that. He is that. Yeah. So I wish I had understood more what what it is. Like, is it like um, kind so? Of haunted house it's a full haunted house. Yeah, full haunted house. Oh. Um, there's, a, there's a maze. They'll have um, again. It's all going to be um, cowboy themed, but like you know, Halloween scary cowboy. That's why I'm really excited to work to do the art for the label. Ooh. But yeah, so we'll have all the dates um, for the. Uh, for when it is and the hours and I'll be down there. Again, I'll be posting that up as we get closer, but it's October. The first night is the 13th and it's all that week. Nice. That sounds fun. And I'm probably getting a lot of those facts wrong, but it is happening and it is in October. So I will get the right facts as we get closer. 
I gotta see some pictures, like how, like what's the, the, the haunted house thing like? They're really, I mean, some of the stuff they're talking about dealing with the, with the actors and stuff, it's really cool. I mean, it oh. is a company that does, you know, they are- They're adult. Yes, oh, it's, it's yeah. They have an, a kid's night trick or treat that they do have there, oh. um, that they, kids all get to go around and, and the actors are there. There's not in as scary a makeup yeah, yeah. situation, but yes. But then they have adult stuff, so it's like- Yeah, yeah, scary. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're saying the theme is Western. So, oh, that that's right up your alley. That should be fun. Yeah. That should be really fun. I like it. I like the adult scares. Yeah, so again, excited. I'll be there live, live demoing. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, to see the art on the label. Cool. So opening night is gonna be October, Friday the 13th. Oh, yes, oh, of oh, course yes. it is. Very cool. So Kate is saying that her original is the um, bandito on a yellow background riding a motorcycle holding tequila. So that would be the TJ twin. Mm -hmm. Nice. I was actually just looking at that piece the other night. That, that is really funny. OG pieces. Yeah, yeah. That's a super fun piece. That's like very new, you know? Mm. Matthew's asking, um, yeah, is this piece already sold? It's his. Yes, Matthew, this piece is already gone. Um, so most of the time I do live streams, we try and, and, and save them for the live stream. Once the sketch is posted, they usually get snatched up. This is actually snatched up by a collector who was inquiring about um, a music piece. They, they have uh, missed out earlier, a long time ago on a piece, and they were just talking about it and, and uh, were asking about a commission. And I just happened to show them the sketch for this, and then this piece is now gone. But we'll have prints maybe about a little over a month. Yeah, yeah, we'll have full prints. <laughs> Bethy Boo says boop. Boop. <laughs> I think you got booped. It happens. <laughs> so Melissa says that the reason she's been a little away is they moved halfway across the country. Where did you go? Where are you now? And how is the why internet? I think, I, why do I think you were going to Montana? Is that right? Or you were in Montana? I thought from Illinois to Montana for some reason. Am I totally insane? I might be insane. That sounds familiar. I thought we had that conversation. But you didn't miss anything really. I mean, we, we've just been too busy with the sale to do the live painting. So we're getting things caught back up now. Alan Kaufman says, hey, David. Hey, Alan. Always great to see the OGs coming back. Still hanging around. Well, you're preoccupied. I'm cleaning your phone. All right. Yeah. Probably pretty gross. I, I don't know. I don't know what goes on here. It's paint on it and, and something glittery. I mean, I don't well, know that's no that's probably color. glitter from when I stripped. Wow. I'm a very good dancer. You gotta make a buck. I'm a very good dancer. It's a fun piece because as many guitars as we've done, um, we haven't done anything like that's, I don't know, neutral? Naturey? It's definitely, I don't know how to describe why this one's so different, but it's definitely. Well, it's um, anatomical. Anatomical. So it's it's more serious. A lot of your, your skeleton stuff, there's only a handful that are quote unquote serious. Yeah. Michael Fisher says, hey, from Mississippi, saw your work at the old RTC park during an art show there like 10 years ago. <laughs> RTC. When, when people are calling us old. Yeah, old for sure. That's what I feel like was happening right there. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. I'm not kidding. M I S S I. Um, what's the RTC Park? I don't even know. 
know. At the old RTC Park, during the park show, there, RTC, what is that? That is... Dirt. I don't know what that is. My brain. Um, I hope it was me and not some other artists who've been gone all this time. <laughs> Matthew Keller says, uh, no beetles on the stump. No, only because it was a little small. Oh, you're supposed to put a little beetle in there maybe. Well, that's too late now, everybody. <laughs> but thanks for the input now, guys, as I'm painting. Where are you when I'm drawing it? Jeff Poland says, skeleton in E minor. <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud of my name, In Tune With Nature. How good a name was that? Very nice. Oh, um, recruit training station at Liberty Station. Oh, okay, there oh, you go. Yeah, yeah. See, that was all official talk. Exactly, doing right it. Right that, right yeah. that, Michael. Over. Over, over. I'm over understanding it. Oh uh, yeah, that Liberty Station was lovely. It's, it's, that's one of the shows that, that uh, I missed to as easy as local, Nice uh, setup. Beautiful grass, area, yeah. On the water, yeah. A cool area, up and coming area. Yeah, it's cool. Ten years ago, yeah. Ten years ago. There I am. You gotta say how long. Maybe we'll slap a little beetle on there. <laughs> when we get down there. <laughs> Give Matthew a break. Put a little beetle on. <laughs> I don't think you'd see it though. It'd it have to be like right in here somewhere. I don't think you would know what it is. And that up there it looks like it's climbing up somewhere bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> a butt beetle. I don't want to draw butt yeah, beetles. Butt beetle. That's like the worst of all of you. Yeah. The world's best butt beetle artist. Mm. I'm not sure I want that mm. title, but it does sound a try. I don't know. I'll get back to you. You can easily jump to number one. Yeah. Alan or number two. Uh, Alan Coffin <laughs> says, have you been doing any of your Western shoot? Hey, Alan, I have not gone shoot. So what happened was the club um, changed their, they don't have any kind of practices anymore. It's all full events and it's once a month, um, but it's a full day, like eight hours. And I just haven't been able to get the schedule anymore. And because they don't do practices, I don't want to go there, you know, not having practiced at all anymore. So no, I have not gone in, in geez, well, years. And I actually, I yeah. Everything off. Right. Yeah, I, I sold off my guns, the uh, the rifles, and um, my awesome lever action rifle uh, to a friend who was thinking about you know getting into it too. So I wanted to encourage him, and, and I just wasn't going enough. So unfortunately, short answer, no. And it's a bummer because I do miss that. It was just really fun. I think they're so welcoming and a, a fun time. And what what, uh, what Alan's asking about is um, single action shooting. So it's like old timey. Guns like yeah, you dress in cowboy gear. Accuracy. Yeah, you dress in full gear. You have um, registered names, you know that you uh, that you shoot under. Mine, of course, was a uh, Gringo Loco. Um, but it's just really a really fun time. Old Western shooting. And the reason I got into it was I was doing um, reference material um, for paintings, and they were just so welcoming. And I just kept going back and getting more photos. And then I went back and I bought a bunch of guns and some Western gear. And next thing you know, there I am. Christy Herrera pops in and says, hi, you may know her as the Junior Divine. <laughs> <laughs> Another Arizonan we miss. Don't even know what's going on anymore. Yeah, what's we're out of touch. Out there? What's everybody doing? Golly. So Alexander, before he pops off uh, to sleep in Germany, he asks, have you ever had an accident while painting that screwed up the work that you did? Um, not a happy little accident. <laughs> so I've had, um, I had somebody's kid pull the easel down, just grab the top of the easel and pull it right down on a wet painting I was working on. Um, luckily, uh, it fell the right way and the painting wasn't completely destroyed. So I was able to salvage that. Um, I have left a half finished painting outside the truck as I loaded the car to leave and left a half finished, finished painting somewhere in Tucson, Arizona. Yep. So if you own the half finished yep. painting, um, please send me a picture. I'd love to see where it ended up. <laughs> Yeah, we were doing a, an event in Tucson, it was about, I mean, about 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was about half done, spent, spent hours on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and we're really tired after a three-day event, and, you know, it's just, it's chaos, and, and, and packing up all of our materials, and whatever. And it was wet, so it's the last thing to go in. Yeah, and it was wet, so we always put it, like, on, on the toppiest top of all the stacked stuff in the truck, and all this kind of stuff, and... You know, we just thought it was good, and, and we start driving. I, th I mean, I think we probably got to Tempe. 
So. Oh no no! I think we got home. Like we, I, I was unpacking and asking you where it was. I think we got all the way home and did literally. We might have. We're hours away driving, and then we kind of sat there. And we're like, well, the painting, the wet painting, should be right here on top of everything, so it could dry. Like, where, where is that? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, this isn't, this isn't normal. Like, so it just flew off somewhere. That was bad. It was laid next to the truck, and never even got put in the truck. Unrecoverable. So. Yep. But um. You you throw your brush often. Yeah, the brush will spin sometimes because of my junky fingers. The brush I squeeze so hard, the brush will flip out of my hand and hit the hit the uh, canvas. I can always fix those. It sucks sometimes, but I can usually fix those. But you know, we've had people you know bump into me. I can fix most of that stuff. The hardest thing was definitely the the, the small child pulling the entire thing over. That's probably the most catastrophic painting event. So Christy's saying they're actually driving to California tomorrow. California. It's an easy drive. I get why people do it. Six hours, six and a half. It's hot out here, though. I don't know. If yeah, you, you picked a poor time. I, yeah, I don't know if you like. I know it's hot as crap in Arizona. And you're gonna laugh at us because we're like, oh, it's 95 and it's, it's terrible hot right now in San Diego. Like we're we're in the like if San deep San Diego, you're probably in the, like the low 90s. I mean, yeah, not a joke. Oh. They're going to Hesperia to visit a grandma, mm. a great grandma. She's 103. Hesperia is going to be on fire. It's going to be so hot out there. 100... She's 103. You're going to get 103 degrees. Good job, grandma. Yeah, she's. Oh, she said it's going to be 105. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Damn it. So Matthew's saying he likes the uh, Western content the best. All he right. Says, he says the uh, rockabilly car. Content is his wife's favorite, especially like the old trucks. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it. So all right, so good. You're both going to get something in the next couple months because, again, I'm doing that Western piece um, for the Ale Smith collaboration, the beer. So I'll have a, a that will be art with prints and everything. And then there also I have a, um, a Rockabilly uh, a C10 pickup truck idea, and I have some other things. So both of you will get something. Seven Wheels over on Instagram is saying, yeah, it's a heat wave right now. It is this is this is it, man. Summer kicked in. Yeah, the AC is on. Kick the door. Yeah, we turned the AC on at the house, and which we have only had to do uh, last year. Previous years we haven't had to, and now we're just like, yep, it's on. We're done. We can't handle it. <laughs> so Christy says she was just doing a drive by, but bye and peace to us. Thank you guys. for hanging out. Yeah, we miss you guys. Hi to you and your man. Bummer. Yeah. Laura Page says you don't know hot until you're in Arizona. I'm yeah, yeah. Stroke. Oh. It's true. Our our most mind blowing. Oh, the Phoenix Comic Con. Phoenix, <laughs> right? Phoenix Comic Con, maybe maybe in like 2016, and uh, it was right at uh, the end of May, right? It was was it Memorial Day weekend? I think so. Yes. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend, end of May, and it was uh, hundred and in the hundred and seventeen. I think it yeah, was one hundred sixteen, one hundred seventeen, and we were just like, "This is." I was so mad at you guys. This is so <laughs> for lying to me. We're we're sitting in our hotel room and we had to go to the show, but our car had to be parked kind of far away at the hotel, and I was like, "You need to go get the car." And like bring it and, and try to park it closer to us, like with the AC on. And then I think we shower. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't get stolen. And then we and then we get in the car. I'm like, this is this is crazy. We're like, okay, no, 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 let's not be crazy. Let's just we'll walk really slowly to the car. Just take your time. <laughs> and 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 we'll just you know we'll be fine. And we were like, we we're just sweating the whole way. We're like, this is crazy. I don't think I felt my brain melt like that before. It's just like walking outside into a like a a, a hair dryer. To, to like a hot oven. It's like you're climbing into a hot yeah, oven. Yeah. It was it was it was brain melting. Arizona knows how to party when it comes to the damn heat. <sighs> Michael Fisher is saying uh trend Mississippi a hundred plus with ninety percent humidity. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, you grew up in New England. You you had some humidity. Yeah, it was sticky. But it wasn't a. I mean, it wasn't to, a to be terrible like that. Oh my god. Uh, I've never been to Mississippi. I don't know. I don't think you could survive. I don't know if I could survive a hundred with almost a hundred percent humidity. I I get a little picky, I think. 
So Matthew is saying his wife likes old Ford trucks. Well, that's good because that seems mm -hmm. to be what happens. Mm -hmm. Those old forts make your, uh... They tend to be, yeah. The C, again, the C10 sketch coming up, and then what's in the mix? What about that? that you had a bunch of um, guys playing guitars, like in the back of a truck idea. Long That's, the That's the C10. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I've always wanted to do a Ford um, Bronco piece. Yeah. I, I love doing that, the Jeep one that I did. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. love to revisit that kind of four wheel feel, fun stuff. So. Maybe that will come around sometime. Hmm. And if you say so, the Midwest, like St. Louis, is like 95 degrees with 70 percent humidity. So everybody's getting hit right now. You're crazy. I thought it was super rainy. It must just be rainy, super northern east, right? Yeah, Maybe Vermont. North, yeah, Vermont's right? having flooding. So everybody else is just burning up. Yeah. I can't even focus on other people because I'm so overwhelmed with our heat. <laughs> can't deal with it. But. Michael is asking, Michael Fisher is asking, um, are there any more motorcycles in the plans? Like mm -hmm. the old flat track bikes, uh, hill climber was awesome. Well, so um, I'm about to release a, uh, a vintage WLA Harley racer that I did um, at the licensing show over the uh, this last, uh, let's see, two weeks ago. Yep. Um, if you look at my Instagram, you can see that. A little bit of progress. A little bit of progress on that. So that's finished. That will be released. So there'll be a big art release in about a month. Yeah, we're gonna have tons of pieces in that art release. Print and prints of all of them. So um, that will all be in there. And there is a, a Harley in there. And uh, old bikes are always happening. I like the skeleton's uh, rib cage and everything. Well, re realistic skeleton is always super fun because it's just so much rib detail and stuff you can do that. And so is that what you're looking at? You're looking at your sketch, just making sure you got the real lips yes. stuff right? Yes, yes. Yeah, you can see the sketchy right here. Yeah. Headshot, this is just my, uh, to make sure, I don't, sometimes my, I'll want to make a line for the for the sake of the brush, and uh, I get all caught up, and it's not the right line for the skeleton. And the head is really the one I'm always most concerned about, because you, you screw up that, and the whole piece just, it doesn't look right ever. Matthew says this reminds me of those um, anatomy books that have clear overlays that show each layer. Oh, the old acetate. Yeah, yeah. I remember those. <laughs> That's so cool. I haven't thought about that until you just mentioned it. That's funny. I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the, like, and you pull away each, each acetate would be like a layer of nervous system and then yeah. the bones. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool one. They were super expensive too, I think. Or rare? I don't know. They weren't everywhere. I know they were either either like at the library or like the, the, the teacher had it, but I don't think it was something we had. But I remember them. That's funny. Abby Lynn is watching. Hey, Abby, thanks for hanging out. Let me make some new paint here. That paint got a little uh, rubbery. And with the skeleton, it needs to be uh, perfect when doing the face because we got little tiny teeth. Yeah, yeah. We got some tiny chompers to toss in, so we want. That to be nice and good. So yeah, we'll have a big, again, as we mentioned earlier, the big art release, um, the owl piece that you saw me do, if you look at my Instagram um, a few weeks back, that's gonna be in the air, the owl piece, the double trouble piece, the, um, the new motorcycle piece, this piece here, all be in that art release, which would be prints. Some of those originals are still available, some are already gone, but they'll all be in that sale. Not sale, just that, that release when we do that, which is coming, coming soon. Speaking of sale, the uh, Christmas and July sale should be shut down on Sunday night. Yes, if you haven't bought your stuff yet, Christmas and July sale is still going right now. All kinds of blems, retired prints, uh, one-off samples. There's original art sketches in that sale also. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't... Uh... And I have like, there's probably a hundred canvases, like 
like real popular designs that are like 20 to 40% off. It's like our big um, spring cleaning type of sale. But so that ends on Sunday night. So get in there. Doing so, so many cute pieces recently, you forget how long, how much longer the, the more serious stuff. Well, like I always joke with you on the on the silly pieces, you know, your skeletons have like three ribs. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and it's, done. It's not exactly anatomical, whereas this is. You know, how dare you? The whole, the whole concept here is. Uh, you could do surgery based on my small ones. Uh, <laughs> I would hope nobody would need to do that. I mean, not my surgery, but somebody else's surgery could definitely not be done. My doctor, if you don't mind. Yep, the crows are all letting someone know. Oh no. Paul says that uh looks awesome. He says I'm looking out the back window and it looks like it's smoky out your way. Are you kidding me? There's been like a little, little too many fires for my liking. Yeah, it's been a little uh, fire buggy. Western horse and train scene ones for my son for his going away present for college. It's his third prank. He loves it. Everyone loves a good Christmas in July. So. Excellent. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, the truth. That's nice. Well, we were excited this year too to be able to have um, original artwork in there. You know, we're starting to, you know, now that we're off the road, you know, doing not doing shows, we're just getting a better idea of you know, our workflow and, you know, having sketches and stuff like that. Just, it's fun for me to sketch first off, traditionally. Gives me reason to get more sketches done. So we're glad we could have some of that extra stuff in the sale. Fred Ronstadt says, miss you guys. Hey. hey more OGs coming out. All the Arizona people because they're stuck inside. Saying, does it bother you when you work on an original piece and then later see an obvious ripoff on site? <laughs> Wish <laughs> <laughs> where they just make slight changes, but it's based off of one of yours. Oh. <sighs> yes, short answer <laughs> of course it does. That uh, it's very frustrating because you know, and, and because it's changed, you know, it's not even worth me chasing sometimes because it's changed enough where it's not worth the, the, uh, the issue, but it's always annoying, um, especially on Wish and all those places. I encourage you if you're buying from Facebook or buying from Wish or those places and you, and you find a shirt with art, just drag that shirt into the Google lens to do an image search and just make sure that it's not some artist's work that's being stolen. Because very rarely is it not stolen. Seven Wheels over on Instagram says, miss the flight surprise sketches. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, oh geez. <laughs> Right? Oh geez, you're right. You're right. You know, we haven't traveled in a while, but yeah, I when I do, that will happen again. <laughs> this is the if I die. Uh, yes. This, this sketch survives. It'll be worth a lot of money. 
This could be the last sketch I ever do. I'm flying on a plane in 20 minutes. But yeah, Matthew, so, so as of recently, like in the last, I would say six months to a year, we actually got some really good lawyers who are now going after that kind of stuff. Like before we felt really limited, you know, there's just, it's just hard to chase stuff down, hard to get that taken care of. And I think, I think we're getting better help now. Yeah. Yeah. The hammer's dropping. Like legal help to where, where they are sending out cease and desist and they're saying this will be taken down. And you know, it's hard when they make little changes because you're like, how much time are we going to spend like arguing over the changes they've made and some of these sites, the stuff they do is, it's just so unfair. I've done takedowns to people to um, usually um, Chinese producers. And then they'll come back and, and it'll be taken down and I'll get taken down and we'll go back and forth. They'll relist it. I'll get taken down again. Then they'll come to me and ask my permission. And then I go, okay, here's how much it costs. And then they go, no, we're not going to do that. And they make their own. And it's usually terrible. And sometimes one specific case, this one distributor just kept making, having designers make the art and it was still enough where I could keep taking it down. So I was able to take it down probably six, seven times. And then finally they just, they just offered to try and pay, which, you know, you don't let those guys pay because they're just gonna rip you off anyways. But it's a, it's a constant hassle. It, it constantly sucks. It's been going on so long, but it's getting better. Seven Wheels says uh, they actually have several, some watercolor and pencil. Oh. That's awesome. That, I was thinking about that the other day. Something popped up in our, um, in one of your Facebook feeds or whatever from years ago when um, we were in Italy. Because you've done some really cool kind of religious uh -huh. sketch and water. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I do miss that too. I miss that was a, a neat time to, to do that stuff. Lots of time on your hands, you know? Eight hour flight, 16 hour flight, so like that. Well, and then because you and I, one of us would always be jet lagged. Yeah. And if you were napping, oh, I would be wide awake. And if I was napping, you'd be wide awake. So give me something to do. Matthew's saying, I know your cartoon skeletons are ripped off a lot. Yeah, some, like like some of the old school designs just get ripped oh. off continuously, like again and again. It's so bizarre. They'll just change what the skeleton's holding. Yes. You know I mean? yeah. They're holding booze, then they're holding flowers, then they're holding, you know, and they just change it for whatever the occasion is and then put a little a little uh, quote below it. Makes you crazy. I have one design that the guy has, I have like copies of him holding tacos, uh, corn holes, Guns, drinks, remote control, remote control cars. Yes. Um, what else are we holding? Uh, all kinds of stuff because the they hot, sauce. hot sauces. Yeah, yeah. So he's just been stolen so many times. But it's weird the levels. You know, it, it's crazy that the way it gets stolen too. We but we were doing car shows before and and see whole murals painted of my work, like not even changed. You know, and it's, it's in that weird guideline of like, you know, who paid who and why didn't you get permission? On a short, it never goes away. It's part of the art. <laughs> this the way it is. And it sucks. So I'll do the top of the guitar and then I'll slide the whole painting up a little bit. Okay. And then you gotta get close to where that can't be seen anymore.
Oh, right, right, right. Uh, Michael saying I saw some of your work done on some of those bowling shirts. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's a bummer. That's a bummer too. <laughs> it's a real bummer because I'm like, I would love for our stuff to be on bowling shirts. You know what I mean? They'd be, they'd be, they're cute. Or I hate when I like the design they do when yeah. they're ripping us off. <laughs> we saw a design on, on um, like girls, like gardening overalls. It's kind of a gardening thing. It's really cute. And you're like, no, I would love to do that. But they just, they just steal it and slap it on there. Joey Tapia says amazing talent. Hey, thank you, Joey. Appreciate it. And Ikachina says love it. Thank you, Ikachina. So Matthew's asking, um, what are your thoughts on the Warhol lawsuit over the Prince of Warhol? Oh, I think that, that they deserve to lose. That is, you know, all he did was trace the image that was already there. He didn't do anything else different but do a posterized Photoshop effect, which is what we call it now. So I think that um, the copyright should stay with the, uh, the photographer and they should pay. Again, I don't, I, I know as art is in the eye of the holder, but there's some junk of, you know, that it isn't art to steal someone else's image and do someone else's stuff. That's not art. To just change the color, right? Yeah. To pull, to pull the levers and- Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if, I don't care if it was done for a commercial and you put it on canvas, it doesn't mean that it's art, it's someone else's image. Yeah, and the uh, it's always post too. Like never again. A lot of Andy's stuff is all that style, and I get you know how that could cause problems with all of his stuff, but that's just the way it is. It's just Miles over on Instagram says love the artwork and the stuff you got. Hey, thank you, Miles. Appreciate it. As long as it's just Miles, I don't want to talk about else. Mm -hmm, just Matthew is asking, do you have NFTs of your work? I don't have NFTs. Um, I, uh, I I think it's... Uh, first of all, I don't, I don't like the way the system... I mean, blockchain exists. It's a real security thing. The the dynamics, the, the way it works is something we should use and have. But right now, it's not um, uh, eco-friendly enough for me. There's too much energy being wasted for this kind of stuff. And also, right now, it's, it's not about the art. It's just no. about collecting the, it's about, you know, rich guy, play, people play with money. Yeah. yeah. It's, about, it's play, about playing with money, not about the art. If it was about the art, then sure enough, I'd be in there. But I don't need to, you know, make myself NFTs, try to make a quick buck and devalue what I perceive of the art. I mean, you've been approached dozens of times. Dozens of times. But it, I, I just, I just don't think it's, it's where we need to be. No. Because it wasn't about the art. It was all about, hey, you, you're an artist, you should do NFTs. You know, it just wasn't, it wasn't any kind of like, you know, oh, the art is this and there's an NFT, you know, realm for it, so. Hand, and then I'll lower this whole thing. But good questions, guys. This is all uh, all good stuff. I'm holding the skeleton, skulled by hand for the last for the last fifteen minutes. I haven't been working on him.
little Pikachina is saying I'm watching my picture being made. Oh, maybe maybe that's uh, maybe that's theirs. She's not supposed to know. I don't know. It is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get someone in trouble. Oh, no. Pikachina. <laughs> Over on Instagram says looks great, David. Hey, thanks, Patrick. Appreciate it. I'm getting there. And this has nice detail. I really like the uh, the detailing. Yeah, I like the uh, I like all the stuff going on, on the bottom too. All the mm -hmm. all the greenery. Did you did you use gray? in some of the shoulder blades and, and in some of the bones and with wash, did you do anything different with <clears throat> coloration? No, just let the, uh, let some of the color, um, same normal colors. I just did a really flat wash of, uh, of the, a really washed out, I'll call it gray. It's like a, a greenish yellowish hmm. tone. I don't know. It just looks like it has dimension. It's, uh, it just looks a little different. I did a lot more highlight work with the gouache than normal. Like if you went with pure white to pop out some of him sing, which makes the other things look, like give some of that dimensionality. I'm definitely gonna take credit for it, whatever it is. I definitely meant to do it. And Michael says he's gotta go, but he said he enjoyed watching such talent and go eat a uh, Hodad's burger for me. All right, <laughs> you got it. Uh, Roger, Roger. Patrick says, I like how the guitar is different, classical slash nylon string. Yes, I did, I, I did make it um, Spanish style as I usually do, which I, I love the paint of the, the Spanish style, but I want to get a little more classical. Again, it's a little more, to me, traditional. It's a little more of that, you know, um, the connection to nature at its barest form, not, not so much a character as much as someone attached to, the, to nature. And the best part is, um, I can't whatever kind of strings you imagine because I'm not going to paint the strings on. So it's definitely nylon strings. Kelly is asking, uh, saying, great stuff. Will you be at Comic Con? I will not be at Comic Con. Um, Kelly, thank you for hanging out, stopping by. So, no, so we have retired from shows. So we will not be at Comic Con, um, unfortunately. We super obviously a super fun show to do and, and i love painting for i just love to paint live and to paint that many days in a row is really a, a, a fun time um so we will not be there um you can obviously you can find everything online but uh no we will not be at the uh, san Diego comic-con we, we missed so make sure you uh nerd out for all of us patrick is saying all your art um, uh, especially guitar and music art is amazing Thank you. Appreciate that. I, I, I've it's been a, such a part of the, of the art from the beginning. Um, doing music pieces. I, I grew up with a house full, you know, um, with a piano. They, I mean, it was played all the time. It was always around. I, did, I, I love instruments. I love the music part. I love the connection that it has to the artwork and, and the stories you can tell with it. Um, so the next music piece after this, I do have a piano piece that we just were just talking about yesterday that I got to get to eventually. It's been on the list for so long. So. Hopefully we can get that in the works. That's a really fun piano idea. So we will attempt to get that back in the works.
I'm glad you got you this one serious. Kind of an anatomical. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm just I'm just enjoying it because I, I could see how you could have done a more cartoon version. Right? Mm -hmm. He's having fun, he's sitting on a little stuff playing the guitar, but yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I like to mix it. I think it's good to mix them up. I'm glad we, we do that because some I either, well I, some of these paintings could be done both ways, and that's the kind mm -hmm. of conversation we always have is, is what style we're going to do it. But yeah, I I love the from personal point of view, my ego loves to paint bones mm -hmm. and to paint this kind of chesty detail is mm -hmm. like ego's the wrong word. But my, my my pure enjoyment of painting is is that the cute ones are fun because they're you know they're quick and ideas are, are cute. And it's a fun comedic you know choppy blocky style. But I love to get down and dirty, you know, give me, you know, 246 individual bones. Can you still see that or am I in the way? Should I bring it up? Um, it's, the stuff is pretty low on Instagram. You could, you could probably push it up and then over to... One at a time. First we go up, sis. How's that? Yeah, that's probably good. All right, and then we're gonna go this way. Uh, Which way do you want? <laughs> this, this isn't gonna work. that you gotta wait 15 minutes to get this right, time right. to catch up Let me get my... space time Let me get the space time continuing to line up yeah that's good. all right and if you're on my cam here you're gonna be seeing the top of my head it's just the way it's going all right. uh, this is a shitty stroke because i put too much but to myself Left-handed nightmares. So Patrick is saying, do you have an idea in your head and start to just paint it? Um, start with a little idea and expand or build outward and it becomes the masterpiece as it goes. How do you kind of do pieces like this? For so this piece, he's like, this always, always starts with a drawing and and you can see my drawing. Well, you, there's my drawing. Um, so I start with the, on the main, camera. main camera. So here's the drawing. I kind of cut the pieces out, but you can kind of see this. There's my sketch. So I make a sketch first. Always, I always sketch all my art out first. Um, I, ne I never paint just jumping in. Unless some kind of live jam type thing. Never though. I paint, I do my sketch first, um, work on all the details, um, get everything I want done there. And then I size it to the canvas I'm going to paint it on. I print it out and I trace my drawing on there. And the reason I do that is because um, my, when I redraw a sketch, it never captures the same energy and the same, you know, just the life that original sketch has. So I always take that original sketch, which is done digitally, I take that energy from that original sketch and that's what I print out and, and trace onto my drawing and then, and then start painting from there. That way everything is exactly where it should be. I've already worked out the problems. You know, it's just, it's just for me, the best well, workflow. To keep everything where I want it. Otherwise, you know, if I didn't plan it out, then this leg could end up off this, you know, the screen. It just helps me plan out everything on the painting and where it's going to go. Move your head camera down a little bit since you went bloop down.
So, um, I'm not sure how to say this. O o Otis Meter? Otis Meter. Otis, uh, I don't know. Otis Meter? <laughs> On Instagram. It says, what's your favorite part of the whole process? I know it's your least favorite part. <laughs> um, favorite part. Obviously, the, 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 the energy of the initial sketch is always, uh, I really enjoy that kind of creative moment. But the actual, like, if you pick the one thing that is my favorite part, this is it right here. Just do, doing, the, doing the enamel. Doing the enamel. Yeah. There's nothing more fun for me. I, I, I don't want to say hate, but the worst part of it for me is all, laying all the colors underneath because I'm so excited as I'm laying them down to get to the enamel. Cause it's just, it's, it's the, you know, the, the, the nooks and crannies. It, it's all the detail. It's, it's all the fun. It's, it's just, it's, it's very free. Right? It's very, which is, the drawing is like, Oh, inspiration. Let me, let me figure this out. Let me tweak it. Let me, but it's raw, it it's, but it's raw with the challenges of making it a new design. Meaning like, you know, it's ups and downs. Cause you're like, Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, try this. That works. You know, it, it, it's a mixture. Well, the line work to me is never anything but amazing and fun. That makes if that makes sense. But yeah, Eric would know. I I detest the, the gouache stage. He's like, can't I hire like a or have a have a, a protege or a, a helper or somebody that yeah. just does like the 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 acrylic background because it's just layers and layers of acrylics it's kind of messy it's kind of uh, you know it, it's fun because it's messy and it's that, that childhood you know making a mess type thing but to me it's also a challenge because it doesn't always turn out the way you're i want trying to get somewhere. yeah yeah and, and that can be wrought with also with um challenges and because it's on, on um it's so time sensitive that the, the technique requires you know certain things to be certain you know stages of dry it, it can be a little more wrought with uh, with trouble that again enamel is by far hands down no exceptions the most fun part Matthew's saying this would be a cool garden uh, ornament. <laughs> well, you should see our, um, uh, what would you call it? Like our house sign? And we posted about it a few months ago, but, but Dave took one of his funnier little skeleton designs uh, that was kind of really about our, our avocado grove and the house and all the animals we see here. It's this really cute kind of Cinderella little skeleton guy with all this fun, fun stuff around him. And we had a friend of his make, um, what did he do? He did a full, he made a full um, vinyl sign, but we did a full power coat die cut of yeah. the shape. So it's, it's a real deal sign. It's, it's, it's kind of like garden ornament type thing, but it's a, it's a sign for like our driveway, for like our house. Uh, it has the house number below it, all that, but it's like, what is it, four by four? Yeah, yeah. It's really funny. It like makes me laugh every time I drive by it. I do love all the greenery in this piece. It'll be fun to do all the detail down here. Matthew, seen have you ever had three D items made of your work? <laughs> you had three. D so we did. I've done sculptures in the past, which were um, they actually sold out all the remaining blanks that we had in the um, Christmas of July sale. So we've done. Um, I've done sculptures. We have had, let's see, 3D stuff though. Well, the Tiki Mug, would you call it? Oh yeah, Tiki Mug. We had Tiki Mug done of, a, um, of my designs. So Tiki Farm did a, a um, did a three, they had to, to kind of redraw a design he had done a few years ago to kind of make it into mug design. Worked with Tiki Farm as like the, the major Tiki Mug makers um, to kind of make it real. Like how does it look all around as a fully usable vessel, right? And then they got that um, produced, so they have ceramic, we have ceramic mugs, and we've gotten like three different, four different color runs now. 
Mm-hmm. So that's been fun. But I would love to get like vinyl toys or, you know, yep. really cool mass produced uh, resin stuff of yours would be so fun. I love uh, the natural texture of wood. One of my favorite things to paint. Because I imagine every piece is off a pirate ship. <laughs> it's all gnarled and old. Yeah, Matthew's saying that the uh, collaborations with a 3D company of some of your designs, like a Skeleton Bandit couple, would probably be popular in a limited number of release. That's exactly what we've gone into. Yeah, we've done a couple. We've had, we had uh, preliminary discussions with a couple of uh, major, companies. major companies to yeah. do that. So yeah, it'll, it'll happen one of these times. It really, it just comes down to money. And with the pandemic, the way that companies and the way the U.S. started dealing with China became really strange. Um, so it was harder to get, uh, cause a lot of that stuff is, is produced over there just has to be. And so that, that made it really difficult to either get those contracts done or to get the actual work done or to wait a year to get the container to come over here and the cost of containers. Like yeah. Tariffs, double, triple. The tariffs make it made everything difficult to yeah, do. So. Tariffs. so it just really, things went really awry for anything like that. Um, the toy industry, the vinyl, the resins, um, book publishing, all of this book, stuff. Yeah, a, a lot of industries just got absolutely hammered around that time and they haven't bounced back. And so it's kind of like, mm, hopefully, hopefully something will pop through. I, I just think it would be so cool. And then, you know, Dave sculpts, but like I'm looking at two unpainted sculpts, sculpts you did like four years ago. One offs, totally cool looking. I uh, really have already been earmarked. A, per a person already want to claim to buy them. Um, they just need to be painted, but they're so funny and so cool to see them in three D. To see them like come to life. Um, that's super super time consuming, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hard materials to, all hard things. to take you away from painting. Yeah. 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 You need an apprentice. <laughs> Oh, Troy Builder says, hey, David. Hey. Hey, how's man, it, I've never reviewed How's it going, man? Yeah. 
Hope things are going well out there. Are you still in Vegas? I am not going to be at Comic Con, man. Sorry. Bummer. He says it's hot out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woo! I'm sure. No, no Comic Con this year. He says this looks great. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Oh, Matthew is saying that um, he's in the logistics business. Oh. So he says, I know the import rules have changed so much in the last five years. Yeah, I mean, you would know it, it's it just all of a sudden getting product made, shipped, released. I mean, it just, it killed a lot of projects. Like like a lot of industries, a lot of projects that we had cooking were like, oh God. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just kind of hoping they come back. A lot of companies went under. They just, they couldn't continue. Oh, so Droid Builder is saying that a lot of vendors are or are pulling out of um, Comic-Con. Yeah, I mean, all the actors are pulling out now. Yeah, you can't blame the writers and actors. They, they have to strike and, and cover their unions. And they got to do that. But seeing the major, um, the Marvels and DCs and stuff, seeing the major producers pull out, it's like, oh, no. Yeah, maybe maybe this is that that turn towards the more traditional way it used to be. There's always people who want to go to Comic Con that haven't been able to go over the years, so they're not gonna you know it's not gonna go away. But what it is in the future going forward, I'm, I'm very curious to see. I mean, is it more of what it, the old time it used to be? Is it? Who knows? So he's saying, yeah, all the actors have officially pulled out. Yeah, that's a shame because I know how much people love the the session. Well, and just putting it all together, if you're going to Comic Con, it is a, you know you worked hard to get you unless you're industry if you've got tickets and you're going to wait in line like you worked hard to get that hate to see people you know planned and unfortunately you wouldn't have known any of this stuff was coming you'd have already booked all your stuff already he says he misses the old comic con i know i know mm -hmm. that was really a, that was a thing i've never seen anything else come close to it that was a, a whole thing fun wacky It's not, you know, 60 guys in a backyard full of droids, though. It's not that wacky. I would say that was what a was for Dave. He's like, this is so cool. Speaking of a, a little boy who was in the rocket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was pretty damn amazing. This is amazing. I am by far the dumbest person in this room. <laughs> Surrounded by super engineers. He said maybe he'll be able to swing by and uh, meet up for dinner. <laughs> yeah. For sure, yeah. Let me know what you're doing. I worked myself because I got so excited for the I the was log. About to say you worked yourself into a corner. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to hear it, but yeah. you're right. Let me go back up here and. Yeah, not great. No, no. Because I, I the wood. I got excited for the stump. So he's saying that he has five more built Jesus. and a life-size bender. <laughs> What's going on? Of course he does. Oh my God. So now we see how he spent his pandemic. <laughs> I should say, I've got to think, I've got to think that the, the boys built out some pretty crazy stuff during that time. That's great. Oh, criminy. My bird buddy just sent me an image with a, a, a bird feeder that has a camera mounted to it. And it sends you alerts when something is eating. So we, we get alerts for birds all day. I don't know how a squirrel got up there. 
I just got a, a image sent to me of a squirrel. Squirrel butt? His head, his old fuzzy head, and he's adorable. How did he get up that pole? No squirrels. There is nothing to squirrel proof. But they've never been able to get up that particular pole. Like, that's... Good lord. <laughs> Matthew says, imagine if this was the 70s and no internet. Would you be painting van murals? <laughs> uh... Giant wizard van murals would exactly do what I'm painting. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love to paint a giant wizard. If you have a, a van out there and you want a commission for a giant oh wizard, please, please call me. <laughs> Dragon oh, wizard. Shame on us for, for saying goodbye to those days. Yeah. You never see a van go by with a full wizard on it. Oh. Isn't that just shameful? I think you have to go up to like Venice Beach. Or I promise you, you'll have the coolest van wizard mural. So the Droid Builder says he's starting the black hole rocket robots. Maximilian oh. and Vincent. He says it oh, later. <laughs> those are my favorites. I love the black hole robots. <laughs> oh, no. I love the Do black. You really? Yeah. Oh, the trash roll. As a kid, that trash robot made me so sad. Oh god. When little robot dies. Uh, no, no, don't ruin the story. If you haven't seen Black Hole yet, you're not gonna see. It's like the darkest movie that Disney ever made. Oh my god. It, let's just say it was not my If you didn't cry when that robot died, then you're I, I you're already cry. dead inside. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I you even said that. I'm not gonna love it. All right, what are we gonna do here? Okay, I'm just gonna work to the left. We'll come back and get that at another time. Come in, back and get. I've gone and blocked myself from this section here. Really? You think so? Yeah, because it's right there. Yeah. I'm going to sit right in all that. Okay. So I'm just going to go this way. For shame. Yep. Yeah. For shame. It was always going to happen. It was. But you'll see a large chunk of the painting done here. <laughs> Then you're surprised when the prints come out because you didn't see the whole thing. Toes there to make sure I didn't have extra toes. Mm -hmm. oh. Matthew's saying that Wally was Bob's great grandfather. Wally was. I didn't know that um, there was robot history going on with the Disney. Of course there is. I didn't know that either. I did not know this. I saw Wally. That's that's pretty yeah. pretty cute, impressive.
Matthew says that's his fan theory anyway. Yeah, see, oh, okay. Don't buying. don't tell me your fan theory. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, uh, I got all excited. I could have gone out and really embarrassed myself trying to pass that story off. I'm still gonna pass that story off, but now I now I feel like. <laughs> I love to paint the wood and, and foliage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I noticed. Hence me skipping down here without any kind of yes, rhyme or reason. This is some deep nerd uh, robot talk that I don't understand. He says, put Wally and Eva together and you get Bob and Vincent. I don't know enough about these characters. What am I, what am I missing? Uh, it can't be summarized in one live stream. No, no, no. Clearly, I have a lot of watching to do. I've been busy watching uh, Black Mirror. <laughs> I'm, I'm on a different. I'm on a different path right now. Because it's hard to see, do you want to? You want to just call? Let me it? do a little more over here. Okay. This little uh, center of the stump here, because it'll annoy me when I look at it later if I don't get that part done. Plus, I'm ready for dinner. I, I assumed. <laughs> Let's put I can pick up selfies. I know what's going on. Let's put it out there in an honest way. Are we driving for said dinner? Is that what I'm to imagine? What's that? Are we driving to said dinner? I, I was just going to ask you a question. Yeah. I assume so. Preparing for said dinner. I assume so. Mm -hmm. Dogs are already being watched. There's no sense screwing that up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll put the fork in there. Look at that shit. Come on.
that up. Yeah. Is it, would you say that you feel the passion for art in your bones? Ah <laughs> Boo! Dad jokes. I thought it was gonna be a wood joke. <laughs> oh, come on. We're gonna mute the whole stream if you two know the stuff. <laughs> a lot more than I thought. Like I said, I think that the, whatever you did with the, uh, the gouache, it's different, right? You didn't, you don't always do that with the, on the skeleton? It's, it's 15% different. Hmm. It just adds an interesting dimension, I like. I just hit a lot of, uh, I brought a lot more white highlights into him. Yeah. Just going right in with white. Yeah. And that seemed to really make the other parts push back. All right, I'm going to uh, wrap it up here in a few minutes. Get your last questions in. Again, thank you guys for hanging out. We try and do this every week. Um, usually Thursday or Friday. I mean, uh, Wednesday or Thursday around this time. But nothing set in stone because we have dogs and old ladies. But we try and do this frequently. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, any questions you have afterwards, if you're watching this afterwards, feel free to just shoot them through. Again, I really appreciate you guys all spending time and hanging out with us, and we'll uh, we'll do this again soon. But last couple things in, get it in. He says, don't forget the beetle. <laughs> he says it has the uh, the appearance of a starry sky or kind of a forest background. It's kind of ambiguous. Oh, this background here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's tough to see there. It has, has tiny uh, little uh, splatters of this teal. And it's the same teal as this flower down there. Mm. Just kind of little things just to pull it together. 
That was a thought, kind of a nighttime. All right. Thank you guys again. We will uh, catch you on the next one. Oh, camera's over here. Have a good night. Take care.